Hey, everybody, middle schoolers, high schoolers, welcome to the only place to be on a Wednesday night in Alden and Iowa Falls. This is Youth Night Live. This is our substitute program right now while we're going through the COVID-19 quarantine, and uh, we're just trying to have a good time and brighten your weekend and just hopefully spread the good news about God to your community. We're going to get started right off with a fun game. So what you want to do is if you have not already, make sure your phones are plugged in, uh, that you can use uh, the battery up and still have some juice. And uh, you're going to want to get your phone ready uh, for a game that's going to involve some texting. This game we played last week by backed by popular demand. It's called Go Get It. Uh, oh, sorry to hear that Amity won't be making it tonight. Uh, she's not feeling good, uh, so we're going to pray for her and anybody else. Anybody got any sick family members, make sure you throw it in the chat because we want to include them in a time of prayer here at the end. Um, but yeah, back by popular man of last week is Go Get It. What you're going to want to do is you're going to see this phone number that's sitting on the screen, 641-732-8090. That's our church texting number that usually sends out messages, but I also can receive messages on it. And so we're going to have a contest where I'm going to bring up a random item that should be in your house somewhere. And once it comes on, the first person who can go get that item and take a selfie with it and send it to that number is going to get uh, in a prize drawing tonight. And so, again, the number on your screen, 641-732-8090, is the one that we will be texting to this evening. And I'm going to go ahead and just get it started. I'm going to randomize this thing, and we're going to see what comes up first. Okay, lots of household stuff. For the first round, we are looking for... A CD. This is the actual music item that your parents probably have somewhere in the house. A compact disc. I need you to go find one, get a picture with it, and send it to that number on the screen. I'm going to be watching right now to see which one comes in first. Um, whoever gets that first is going to go into our drawing tonight for one of our quarantine survival packs. We've got all sorts of good stuff in here for you guys to snack on and drink and uh, just uh, kind of relax during uh, this, this crazy time. So as I'm looking here, nobody's come through yet. I'm just going to flip over, make sure everything's good in the chat. Boom. All right. Looks like we're still live, so that is a good thing. Hey, and we got three likes. That's amazing. That's more likes than last week. All right. Refresh this thing here. I hope you guys are ready for this. I apologize if you weren't. Oh, man, they flooded in. All right. Well, I have quite a few here. I'm going to look at the first. And... Oh, yes. No. Addy, that does not count. That is a DVD of Miss Doubtfire. I need a CD. Compact disc. It's actually music. Oh, Aaron Zalnowski, you've got one. Uh, it's a burn CD, but you know what? So is everybody else's, it looks like. So it looks like uh, that's going to be all right. So... Uh, for our first round, Aaron Zalnowski, you are in. So I'm going to write you down, and I'm going to go ahead and spin this for the next round. Let's see what comes up. All right, dish towel. First person to send me a picture of a dish towel is going to get in on our prize pack giveaway tonight. Dish towel, huh? Well, I bet that's probably in the kitchen. Someone's just gonna have a mad dash there, trip over the dog, maybe run into your mom who's doing the dishes, 
you're going to grab that towel right from their hand. All right. Stuff is pouring in here. <laughs> Gavin, I'm going to say heads up to you because you actually got a real CD uh, rather than a burnt one. I'm going to give you an honorary uh, call for that. I'm going to put you in our drawing just because everybody else, everybody else was a cheater. All right, all right, all right. I'm looking, and it looks like the Ziesman brothers are the first in with the dish towel. Now, it was Zeke that texted me, but the pictures of Tate, um, I'm going to just put you guys in here together uh, to split the prize if that's all right with you. So, all right, congratulations, Zeesmans. All right, how about another round? Let's see what random household item is next. Hand sanitizer. Oh, that elusive, lovely, but yet valuable hand sanitizer. Great hot commodity right now. If you've got one, get a picture with it, maybe even a picture of you using it, and text it in to the number on the screen. So last week was kind of funny. You guys were actually competing against each other and a local, well not a local, a international uh, youth pastor just happened to uh, pop in and check out your, uh, your, your guys' youth group. And so you guys might have to compete against some adults tonight too. Get some people tell me the microphone is too quiet, so I'm going to turn it up a little bit. Please let me know if I turn it up too loud. All right. Oh my goodness. Some people are going like animals here. All right, Jalen Barrick, you are the first one. You had a little dinky handheld pocket one, but that is still a hand sanitizer. So congratulations to Jalen Barrick winning this round. I'll write you down. Let's do a couple more here. Let's spin that randomizer. A box of tissues, also important personal hygiene item that you need right now if someone's sick in the house. Get that picture of a box of tissues. Not a single tissue will do. I don't want to see anybody trying to pull off a roll of toilet paper for this one. I need the box of tissues. Oof, duh. Jalen Barrick, you may have been first again, and I don't think I can accept that since you're already in the drawing, so I'm going to give it to somebody else. I'm just looking through here. All uh, right, still open. Anybody could get this. All right. Hey, I know those cuties. It looks like Jaden and Preston. Daddy's got you right there. Okay, so my kids are in the mix for the prize drawing. How about two more? Just real quick. Anybody out there can get involved. I don't even care if it's one of our leaders. Just send us that selfie. A selfie with a family member watching the stream. That means I need a picture 
of the TV or the computer or whatever it is in the background where you guys are watching this thing, all right? A selfie with your family, just one family member watching the stream. Send me a picture of that right now. This is my hydration break real quick here. To everybody who might be watching the replay of this throughout the week, know that you can still participate in other fun games that we are going to be doing throughout the week. So stay tuned as I tell you about where you can find us on social media, but also make sure that you get in next Wednesday right at 7 o'clock because we are not only going to be picking the people who were involved, but the people who get in on the games first for our prize drawings. So if you don't have lightning fast reflexes, you can still win some other things uh, just by simply showing up in the chat. All right. Ooh, I have some stuff here from some adult leaders now. Let's check this out. All right. Okay. It looks like, unfortunately, uh, Sarah Richmond's family tried to get in, but there's only a picture with a family member in the TV. It was not a selfie, technically. So I'm going to go for the next family, which was the Bobians. Congratulations. So I'm going to put you guys in the mix. All right, but we're going to do one more here. Final go get it for the evening. Let's spin. A wooden pencil. No mechanical pencil will do. I need an actual wooden pencil for this one. Um, doesn't have to be sharpened, but let's see if you can dig one up somewhere. I don't care if it's a classic yellow number two or it's one of those ones that got thrown out at the parade and it says something, something orthodontics on it. But go find me a wooden pencil. <laughs> all right, all right. Still get some pictures of some selfies here. Okay, there came in the mother load. Let's see who is our first selection. All right, looks like it is my friend Logan Morlam. All right, man, I have got you down. I'm going to make sure you guys all get into our drawing at the end of the evening. But if you didn't make it, do not fret because this is not the only way for you to win. Uh, we are going to have a couple more fun trivia type things throughout the evening. But first off, I have to jump over to a special drawing just before we get into the rest of our announcements. Uh, this first drawing is actually for everybody who participated in our uh, challenge that was a, uh, what am I trying to call this? Wow, this is a quarantine challenge. There we go. That we posted last week on our Instagram, all that other social media uh, that challenged you guys to do things like clean your room, memorize the Bible verse, or people who shared on their stories about 
this youth group to their friends over the course of the week, sometime before 5 o'clock tonight. Uh, so we put those names in a drawing for this special quarantine pack, which includes peeps and toilet paper. And I'm going to spin this one right now. Again, this is only for the people who participate in some stuff throughout the week, not the game that we just played. So let's see um, who it's going to be. Oh, there we go. There we go. Now it's spinning. All right. Are you guys ready for this? And I'm going to stop on Mr. Aaron Zolnoski. Congratulations, Mr. Zolnoski. This prize pack is yours. I'll be delivering it tonight after the stream. Congratulations. All right. So we are going to bump on over to announcements now. I uh, just want to tell everybody about a few big things. The first off is that in the middle of this time when we're not together, we're still needing to raise support for our compassion children, Cheska and Isaiah, that we uh, supported just right before uh, this all went down. And we ordered the new bracelets. We have them in. If you didn't see them last week, they're just like the Cheska bracelet, only they're blue and they say change for Isaiah. And I've got these now that were selling for $5. And uh, I want to know if you want one, how can I get you one? What would be the best way? Throw in the chat and let us know. Like, hey, I would send my parents by the office to get one. Or can you have them left at a particular business or something like that? Or do you guys just need to dig into cushions at home, find all the change while you're stuck on this little break, and then just save it so the first time we get together afterwards, we're able to sell them? Whatever you think is the best idea, I would love to know about it. So make sure you let us know in the chat. Uh, something fun interesting has begun. There's been some flamingo sightings in people's yards. If you've seen one, we'd like for you to know or for you to let us know about it. There we go. Um, if you see some flamingos in your yard, post to social media, put a hashtag edge flock on there, and then also pay it forward. Uh, if you see them, you'll know what I'm talking about. That's all I'm going to say for now, but I'll uh, be looking for those flamingos. And if you see them, share them. Uh, something that we added this week to our programming is a little something outside of this one hour program on Wednesday night. Uh, something around 2.30 on Tuesdays and Thursdays. On Tuesdays, we have what we call the COVID-19 Youth Ministry Update. It's just like a little, hey, what'd you miss over the weekend? And a funny thing, maybe it's an interview or a game. Uh, yesterday, I had my friend Cade Campbell on, and we did the Peep Taste Test Challenge. Uh, we've got more silly, funny, entertaining things that are going to be on on Tuesdays at 2.30. Uh, of course, then we have the show that you are watching right now on Wednesday nights at 7. But then when you jump over to Thursdays at 2.30, we're going to do some kind of group interactive game uh, where uh, there's a chance for another prize pack to be won that can be delivered to your doorstep. Uh, tomorrow at 2.30 here on the YouTube channel, you want to stream in again, we're going to play a crazy game called dead cat. Now some of you guys might remember this game from like four years ago or so. Um, some of you guys might just be like, what on earth is this? I promise no cats are going to be hurt. It's just a fun, entertaining group storytelling sort of thing where we adopt a fictional kitty cat and you have to make a group collective of decisions about how to best care for that cat. Everybody who's in the chat We'll get entered in a drawing if you guys manage to keep the cat alive. So look forward to Dead Cat tomorrow at 2.30 on YouTube. Check it out. Uh, also on Thursday, something that you may not be aware of, there is still the lunch program through the schools, and there are specific pickup times for the different locations. 
uh, depending on where you live in town. Uh, there is one at Julie O'Neill Park as early as 1030, then to Rock Run, then Pine View, and there's also one that goes to Alden. Um, you definitely want to make sure that you can make it to this location for a pickup and take it with you lunch uh, for anybody from, I believe, the ages 1 to 18. And also on Thursdays, possibly even Fridays, they're doing the Backpack Buddies program, passing out uh, things like to make... I don't know, um, I think peanut butter and jelly, uh, fruit, uh, pasta, that kind of stuff for kids to take home. So uh, if you know anybody who's having trouble getting a meal in the middle of the day or on the weekend, spread the word on this video, just this particular announcement here. Uh, we we want to make sure that no kid goes hungry. And if you're having a problem getting to one of those locations, let us know so we can try to help you out and get a lunch delivered to you or maybe just some additional emergency items that we have in a pantry. So um, that is going on. And many, many more things, including daily devotions, which we want to encourage you all in. Uh, and so check us out on all the social media channels. We are on Snapchat. We are on Facebook. We are on Instagram. We're also on Twitter, but it seems like that's more for the parents. Uh, so uh, you can check those out daily. Every morning we have a devotional for you to check out. Every afternoon there's something fun, uh, even if it's just a little quiz. Uh, it's something to entertain you guys and keep us all connected. So stay plugged in. All right. That means it's time to go into our lesson. After I take a quick hydration break here. And tell you, talking makes me thirsty. But I'm glad that I have something to drink. And I'm glad that I'm alive, and even though these are kind of crazy times, we are here together. Uh, we have got uh, this crazy situation where many people are stuck at home, uh, except for adults or maybe some teens who are just not listening to the rules. Uh, people who have to stay away from school, work, uh, sports practices, friends, uh, certain family members, and you have this thing called stay in place. But for some of us, it's basically stuck in place. Um, thank God that we can walk the sidewalks in our neighborhoods. Other than that, uh, my family has not left home in over a week. Uh, the only person that's left is me. I, I'm the one who runs to the grocery store and I come here to the office. Um, it, it's pretty rough, though, when people are stuck duck in this kind of situation and uh, it's not the only time it's happened. Uh, all of us have been stuck in some way or another. Uh, I would like to know how have you been stuck? Let us know in the chat uh, because we we want to we want to talk about that tonight. Uh, of course, there are times when you could not leave a place like now. Or I'm thinking about a story that I'll share here in a little bit. I was once stuck in an elevator, uh, but maybe it wasn't a physical stuck. Maybe it was some kind of emotional being stuck. Maybe there was a period of depression or maybe there's a period of waiting because you're just wondering what was going to happen and you couldn't move on in life until something changed and so you just felt stuck where you were at. Um, sometimes some things stick, uh, including things outside of our brains, uh, outside of our life. Sometimes there are things that just stick around in culture uh, that are just wildly popular and uh, they, they're there for a while. Uh, as we are waiting for you all to give us your stories in the chat of how you've been stuck, I'm going to play another quick quiz game. I got four or five little questions for you guys and this thing is called How Long Did It Stick? Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to list a movie or a popular song, and I want to know in the chat, how long do you think it's stuck at number one? Whoever gets the closest will win a vote cast in our thing tonight. So I'm just going to write question one. 
to mark this in the chat. If you have an answer, uh, go ahead and put it in there for this. The movie Titanic. For some of you guys, that's probably like when your parents were in high school. Uh, but the movie Titanic set a record for how long it was in the movie theaters. I'll go ahead and tell you this. 10 months. It was regularly in movie theaters because it was that important. Uh, but uh, how many weeks, consecutive weeks, was it the number one movie in America? <laughs> Tate says 12 years. No, no. I'll tell you, it's, it's a number of weeks. I see people talking about how they're stuck at home. Someone else was stuck in an elevator for two hours. Wow. All right. Oh, somebody got it on the button. Very funny. It's actually one of our leaders who's probably alive at the time. I know she was. Lindsay Smuck got it right. It holds a record for 15 weeks that this thing was at the number one position. That is a crazy movie. So many girls saw that movie multiple times, my wife included on that. So we are going to go over to question two now. I've labeled it in the chat here. How about the movie? Uh-oh. E.T., there we go. E.T., the classic movie about the little alien who ate Reese's Pieces and he was like, E.T., phone home. Um, it's, it, was a, it was a big movie in the 80s, uh, a, a famous scene where these kids are like riding on their bikes uh, and E.T. like lifts them up in the air. It was like spoofed in the first season of Stranger Things. Uh, how many weeks was E.T. at number one? All right. I'll give you guys a few more seconds. All right, Jalen Barrick was the first to get it correctly at six weeks. So congratulations, Jalen. You're going to get an extra vote cast in our competition at the end of this. Aaron said never. I'll do one more so we can get things moving along. The song, Old Town Road. Oh, my gosh, so obnoxious. Um, how many weeks was that in the number one radio spot. All right, question three. I've got people saying three weeks, some people saying four months. If you're putting months in there, I need you to specifically translate that into weeks. Oh, oh, someone's super close. Someone's so close. Nobody gets it here. Genesee's got it. 17 weeks at the number one spot. Oh, man. And I still am annoyed by it. Uh, so we were asking you guys about sharing a story at a time when you felt stuck. And I can only imagine, it was terrifying, somebody talked about a situation when they're only four years old. Uh, that's got to just seem like an eternity to somebody. And uh, it can be quite frightening. Um, you know, I'll never forget this time that I got stuck in an elevator. I was on an eighth grade trip. 
uh, we went to New York and Washington, D.C. Uh, there were chaperones from the school, but it was the first time I had traveled away without my family. And I remember one morning I got up and I was walking around the hotel that we were staying in. I don't remember what I was doing. I just went down to the lobby. And when I got in this elevator, I was the only person in there. And somewhere in between floors, it just stopped. And I just kind of stood there for a moment. I was like... Is it, is it going to move? Uh, and it didn't move. And after a couple of minutes, I started thinking, what should I do? But then I remembered in movies that there, there's usually a phone box uh, that you can look for. And so sure enough, I kind of fiddled around next to where all the buttons were. There's a panel that opened up and there was a phone in there. And so I was able to reach out and I pressed like zero or something. It got me the front desk and I was just like, hello. And they're like, yes. And they're like, hi, um, I'm in the elevator. And I don't remember what the lady's reaction was, but I remember it, it was it was kind of a, like a, having to convince them that I was really in there because they're like, why are you calling? I'm like, well, there's this phone in the elevator, if you didn't know, for emergencies. And I'm calling because I'm stuck in the elevator. Well, within a couple of minutes, it, it got moving again, and I got out and actually saw a group of uh, managers and, and, and mechanics in the lobby uh, uh, ready to help me, which was really encouraging. Um that's my story of being stuck. It was a very disorienting experience, uh, but I know that I'm not the only person to get stuck somewhere uh, in this world. The Bible is actually full of stories of people who got stuck. In the New Testament, you have the Apostle Paul. He was stuck in prison. Another one of the Apostles, John, he ended up getting left on a desert island for the rest of his, his life. Uh, but you go back in the Old Testament, there are the Israelites who came out of slavery in Egypt. And then, of course, they got stuck in the wilderness for 40 years uh, as, a, as a punishment for complaining. And then there's the biggest one of all, probably Jonah, who was stuck in a giant fish, or like the belly of a whale is what most people refer to it as, for three days. Some people have gotten stuck in some really weird places. Now, if you know your Bible well enough, you might say, you know, I know some of those stories from Sunday school, but those people, they were all stuck by their own action. It was because the Israelites complained or because Jonah was disobedient and ran the other way um, that he got stuck in that fish. And I would say, good job, you're right. Uh, but uh, they, they are not the only stories of people being stuck, especially when somebody didn't do anything to really get there, which is how many of you are probably feeling right now. It's like, I didn't do anything to deserve this quarantine. Uh, why do I have to be stuck here? I want to share with you all today the story of a man named Joseph. Now, if you are familiar with the Bible, again, you might hear about Joseph and Mary, the ones who were the parents for Jesus in the Christmas story. But we're going to go all the way back to the book of Genesis. The first Joseph, there was a young man whose father had 12 sons, and he was the favored one. To be honest, uh, Joseph was the favorite, and um, he definitely had a lot going for him until his brothers got jealous. Uh, kind of going through the story real quick, Joseph's brothers decided to get rid of him. Uh, they didn't want to kill him, but they made it look like he was killed by a wild animal. Uh, he really got sold into slavery. <laughs> he was taken out to Egypt. Uh, he ended up working for this guy named Potiphar. Potiphar was a pretty big honcho in Egypt at the time, and uh, he liked David, not David, sorry, Joseph so much that he put him in charge of his household. Um, well, a lot of people like Joseph, including Potiphar's wife, who ended up uh, wanting to have an inappropriate relationship with Joseph. And he was like, no way. I, I no, I'm not going to do that. Um, he says, no, thank you. She's mad about it. She comes on and again. And uh, finally, uh, he runs away and she has to make up the story because she feels so offended that he was actually coming on her and uh, that he was the guilty party. And it ended up landing Joseph in jail. He was accused of something that he didn't do, but Potiphar didn't know who to trust. So uh, he, he put 
Joseph in jail. And that's what I want to look at tonight is the story of a guy who did nothing wrong. Uh, instead, was sold into slavery by his brothers and then thrown into jail by his boss's wife. A uh, really stinky situation, but let's read what happened to him. Potiphar was furious when he heard his wife's story about how Joseph had treated her. So he took Joseph and threw him into the prison where the king's prisoners were held. And there he remained. But the Lord was with Joseph in the prison and showed him his faithful love. And the Lord made Joseph a favorite with the prison warden. Before long, the warden put Joseph in charge of all the other prisoners and over everything that happened in the prison. The warden had no more worries because Joseph took care of everything. The Lord was with him and caused everything he did to succeed. So to wrap up Joseph's story rather quickly, uh, even though he was in these tough situations he never asked to be in, it didn't mean it was the end of his story. Because he was faithful and obedient to God, he flourished. He actually found purpose to where he was going, and good things happened for him. And he ended up getting out of there and becoming a second in command in Egypt. It's an amazing story. You can read it in like the last 10 chapters of the book of Genesis. But... Um, what I really want to focus on is this phrase that was repeated a couple times. Uh, it says, the Lord was with him. I think it's amazing because all those people, you and me included today, who were in the Bible in those tough situations, Paul in jail, the Israelites in the wilderness, Jonah in the belly of the whale, um, Joseph in prison, they all could turn to God and realize that he was right there with them. In fact, not just that they weren't alone, but they had somebody working things out for their good, which is in fact what Joseph says when you read the rest of his story. When he meets up with his brothers again one day, he actually says, you meant these things for harm, but God turned them for good. And I feel like that's a great example of what's going on right now in our world. This coronavirus, the quarantine, there's a lot of things being wrecked and ruined in our mind. Like, hey, you know, my sports season is over. Or I don't know if my prom season is even going to happen on my junior year, my senior year. Or uh, now things are really tough at home because my parents can't work right now. And we just feel stuck in these situations. But it doesn't mean the good can't come from them. I can tell you personally, for our family, it's a great time to slow down and really love one another and spend quality time together and more time focused on our relationship with God. Um, our daily devotions have actually been happening daily, every day together, been working together. Um, there's opportunity to share God's hope with other people. Right now, there are probably people who wouldn't normally show up at church or youth group, but because of online services, they're willing to give that a chance and hear God's good news. I will tell you one thing. There's an older family that lives down the street, and we just wanted to check on them. And uh, this week, we put a note in their mailbox and saying, hey, it's us from down the street, da 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 address. If you need anything uh, because you can't get out, please just give us a phone call. Um, before we heard from them, my wife had been sitting outside just kind of enjoying the fresh air, and they uh, had seen the mailman walk up had to deliver a package for that day, and he recognized us by the name that was probably on the package and the name that was on the note, or maybe the address. I, I don't really know, but he says, I just want to let you know that I saw what you did for your neighbors. I saw that note, and that just really restored my faith in humanity right now. And just because of this rough thing going on, somebody's soul was able to be poured into. Um, God is with us in so many areas. And 
helping us to succeed in so many things, just like he did for Joseph, the Apostle Paul, uh, for, for, for you as well. Uh, even though there are these tough times, uh, it doesn't mean that good cannot come out of them. Maybe for your family, it's to lean on him a little bit more and, and depend on him in an uncertain time financially. Or maybe it's for you to get rid of some of the distractions. Maybe you're one of those families just you're constantly going, 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 going. Um, it's like it's play practice, it's sports practice, it's travel team on the weekends, and now it's all done. And you can just stop and focus on last week's lesson, which was to be still and know that he is God. And now we hope that you can go the next step farther, which is to stick with God. As we are stuck, we realize that God is with us no matter where that we are stuck. And there is no conditions to how long he will stay with us. With every situation, every difficult, ugly situation, God is there with us. Just like Joseph it didn't matter that he was thrown into slavery and then wrongfully accused and thrown into prison from there. God was still with him. There's no situation that's too ugly for God to be with you. We shared this verse last semester as we did our series, God is high, bigger than the highs and lows, greater than the highs and lows. It's Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. I just want to read these to you once more. And I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries for tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or the earth below, indeed nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And so while we are stuck in our place, we might feel alone is we're the only one in the house all day long, but we need to realize, no, we are never alone because God is with us and his love can never be cut off from us. Maybe though it's something deeper. Maybe it's a sense of fear that you have right now. There's darkness in your world. And again, I want to tell you, there is nothing in all creation that's able to separate you from the love that God has for you. No height, no depth, no force of power can stop God's love for you. If you don't know the story of how much God loved for you, let me tell you it in about 30 seconds. God loved you so much that he left heaven to come down to earth. He lived a pretty poor life and suffered a horrible, horrible death just so he could be with you. God wants to stick with you all. The question is, will you stick with God? Like I said earlier last week, we focused on the, the walkway point was to be still and know that he is God, knowing that he's in control. But are we willing to stick with him even when it gets tough? Are we going to seek him out? As the Bible says in James 4, 8, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. This week, we want to continue to support you guys in those efforts to get to know God even more. I mean, in this time where you think you're stuck, you could be like the Israelites. You're out in the wilderness, cut off from all the distractions, and you're just able to listen to him. And so we want to give you daily stuff to get into. And so this lesson, Stuck, is going to have a six-day-long devotional called Stick With God that goes along with it. So you will see that in the coming days. I will tell you there's a very special Devo that's been made for all of you guys by our dear friend Taylor Van Adder. You can look for that on all of our social media tomorrow morning. And then starting on Friday for six days, you will have a journey through Philippians chapter 4, which is a wonderful section of scripture and it's going to all deal with this idea of sticking with God because God sticks with us through thick and thin no matter what. So would you all pray with me? Heavenly Father, 
I just want to thank you that even though in the middle when it feels like we're stuck and we can't go anywhere or make anything happen, we know that we are not alone. Just like Joseph and the horrible things that happened to him, he was not alone. You were with him, God. And also you were working things out for his good. Even though we may not see what's happening, we know that we can reach out on the phone and call for help and that you will listen and that you'll work out things for our good because you love us. There's no condition where your love stops, God. And we just want to thank you for that. And so we just pray for all the students who they feel stuck right now, families who might feel stuck right now, that you would give them peace and have them know deep down in their hearts that you are with them, God, and that you are working things out for their good. Just help us to draw near to you in this time and be encouraged. In your name we pray. Amen. So we are going to have a few more minutes together here since it's not been quite an hour. Uh, if there's anything else that we can do for you guys, let us know in the chat. Uh, let us know how we can be praying for you, help your family out. Um, and uh, maybe ideas about what might be fun to do together this week in some kind of way because we want to bring you God's love and hope every single day. Uh, so again, let us know what you have over in the chat or direct message us on one of our social media outlets. We are going to throw together one last giveaway, but I need about a minute to plug these names in. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I'm gonna probably need about one more minute to plug these things in. So I'm gonna have you guys all stand still, or hold tight, how about that? Hold tight with uh, one little fun countdown timer. That's educational, so check this out. <laughs> should be together now as we do our final prize giveaway for the night. Uh, before I do this, please make sure that you guys get plugged in afterwards. I'm going to be having the uh, social media up on the screen as we have the outro. Uh, get with us on Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, uh, because we've got so many things going on. We don't want to have you forget about tomorrow at 2.30. We're going to get together on the YouTube channel. We're going to play Dead Cat, give away another one of these awesome packages. Um, I'm going to tell you I'm giving away a medium one tonight. It's got, let's see here, just some like Mountain Dew candy bars, popcorn, and uh, all these have a free t-shirt in it from our friends over at Thrivent. So if you've never got one of those cool gray Thrivent t-shirts, you're going to get one of those. But tomorrow's package is going to include more snacks and even a board game in there for you to play with your families. So make sure that you join us. 
at 2.30 for a fun game. That being said, I'm going to spin this wheel. Who's gonna be? Who's gonna be? Who's gonna be? Anybody else in the chat? All right. Oh, I almost pushed the button that said "end the stream." I would have canceled it. Wouldn't that be an awful way to end this? Whew, I'm I'm a big dork. At least I didn't push the wrong big red button. Here's the right big red button. Let's see who it is. It's the Zeesman Brothers. Congratulations, guys. Uh, just let me know in the chat or uh, text me. Give me your address so that I can deliver your box here in the next hour. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, the announcement slide back up there for you guys to be able to find us on all of our social media stuff. Uh, I see that there's been a lot of stuff in the chat tonight. Can't wait to go back and read it. See what you guys have been saying. Uh, I hear some cahoots um, out there. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see what we can do. Uh, someone said, what is Dead Cat? I tell you what, I'm going to give you guys a sneak peek at Dead Cat. You guys want to see the trailer for Dead Cat? Somebody tell me that you want to stick around in the chat long enough to watch the trailer for one more crazy thing. Getting it ready here. Okay, a couple people wanna see the trailer. I've got it ready. Here is what Dead Cat is all about. Why would you ever take your sweet little cat to such an awful environment? Your cat chooses death instead of staying for the whole concert. Dead cat. Game oh over. Oh my goodness. You don't want to do that. Well, hello there. I'm sorry to interrupt. I can see that you and your group are in the middle of something very important. It's just, well, I found this stray cat in the wild and I was wondering if you would maybe, you know, take care of it for a while. You would? Well, that's great news. Just remember, owning a cat is a big responsibility. You have to feed it, you have to bathe it, but above all, you have to keep it alive. Welcome to the world of Dead Cat. Let me explain how this game is going to work. Every round is a different question, and every question will determine the fate of your cat. You and your group are entirely in charge of the fate of your cat. Some of the choices that you will make will be good for your cat, and some of the choices that you make will be... How do I say, I guess, not so good for your cat? I think you'll understand as the game goes on. One more thing. You and your group have one extra life card, but only one. So use it sparingly. Just remember, you need to keep your cat alive. I think you'll understand as we move to the next round. So let's go ahead and head to round one together. See you there. So that is the synopsis of Dead Cat. Uh, we will do everything from choose a name for our cat together uh, all the way to make li important life and death decisions. And so if you want to be a part of naming our youth group cat and seeing if we can keep it alive uh, and possibly win an awesome prize pack, you need to tune in to the YouTube channel tomorrow at 2.30. All right. Well, I'm going to just leave it there. Congratulations, everybody, on another successful night. It, it just makes me feel greatly encouraged that you guys are not all just like got in here, as many of you, but the likes and the shares. This is awesome. This is amazing. And so just want to say we love you guys, and God bless, and we'll be talking to you later. Bye.